Okay, so as a starting point, we've po posed the question of saying, when will that be levied in red over here in, in the whiteboard? So for a vetable transaction to actually arise, there needs to be particular requirements that need to be prevalent in a particular transaction or environment that would give rise to that being a possibility. And the building block for us to basically get ourselves in alignment with that situation, being a likeliness of that being a reality, we basically have to basically uh, go through a scenario of basically defining a particular environment that would give rise to that being a reality or a possibility. So the first basis on which we will basically uh, build on this block, it would be to define a particular environment. So what is that particular environment or definition that we're talking about? Okay, it would go as follows. A supply of goods or services by a vendor that is taxable. That is the first building block to our VAT journey in wanting to basically answer the question as to when will VAT be levied. It needs to be given rise by a particular condition that needs to be prevalent for mm -hmm. starters. So in this particular instance, we need to understand what a supply is. We need to understand what a good is or what a service is. And we also need to understand what a vendor is and also... Uh, summing that up with understanding what a taxable situation is. So we need all those prevalent components to be a prevalent feature in a particular transaction for that to be a likely reality in that being realized. So what is a good? What is a, a, a basically not a good, but let's rather start off with what is a supply? We need to basically bring our mindset into understanding what is a supply. A supply would be a situation where you basically supplying something to someone. You need two parties. So if you're in the business of basically selling apples and you are, you, you are basically a vendor. So when I come to you and I buy an apple, that would mean that you've just supplied me with an apple. So a supply is something that you have within your business. So a supply can also be something that you do not necessarily see. It can be in the form of a service that could be a supply. If I'm an accountant and I'm giving you accounting services, you cannot see or touch my accounting skills. Yes, indeed, you can see the financial statements and all of that. But in other instances, you cannot see a service which is granted to you. Like for instance, if somebody is making music for you and you require them to basically uh, supply you with music that they make, that is the service that they're giving to you. They're basically giving you music. You cannot see music, but you can likely hear music, it can be put into formats of CDs or whatever the case would be. So that is basically the distinguishing factor that we're basically trying to bring in so far as like, you know, uh, separating a good from a service. So they're basically the same factors in saying that they're both supplies. The one person supplies accounting services, the one person supplies, you know, apples as a vendor. So that's what we basically want to take uh, get into as we're basically trying to understand the concept of supply. So we also need to have a good or a service. So a good or a service, we've already touched on that in saying a good is an apple in the scenario of you supplying apples as a vendor to someone who's coming to buy apples from you. So that is a good, it's something that you can feel, something that you can touch. So you need a good in order for that to be a reality. Or you also need a service, which we've just elaborated in somebody supplying the service of basically giving you their music because they happen to be talented, they happen to be good singers and they're able to make music. So that would be the service that they gave you. Music cannot be taught, it cannot be touched. It's an intangible kind of like service. The same can be said so far as accounting services. So 
we basically are halfway there. So we also need to understand the phenomenon about what a vendor is. A vendor would be deemed as a person or a company or a certain uh, institution that basically qualifies as being a vendor so far as the VET Act is concerned. So for you to be a vendor, there are particular requirements that you need to meet for you to be certified to be a vendor. Those requirements can emanate as you being somebody who's in the supply of even to supply goods or services in a 12 month period of uh, turnover which basically exceeds you know uh, 1 million rands. In that instance you have to be a registered uh, VAT vendor you know it's a compulsory registration whereas if you are somebody who is in the supply of goods or services but their turnover is not more than a million rands but actually is more than 50,000 rands and you want to be a VAT vendor in that situation legislature does allow you to register or rather treasury does allow you to register if you want to register it's not a compulsory threshold that you have to register for like the 1 million rands but in this instance you can register if you so wish so it's basically a voluntary registration that you can basically uh, basically exercise within treasury they do give you that option right so that's what a vendor is basically and the last portion now that we're dealing with is that of a taxable supply taxable that supply of good needs to be taxable but before we sum up this taxable uh, component just remember that the amount of the vendor that you have to basically have it needs to be an exclusive of a vet amount so the 1 million rands and the 50,000 rands that you have as you're making up your 10 over needs to be an, an exclusive of a vet amount basically and another point that we did not come into here is that if you so happen to be somebody who's in the business of supplying commercial accommodation like you basically running a breakfast uh, bread and bread uh, bed and breakfast or you in the hotel industry you're offering hotel services as uh, as a service that you give to other people who have an interest in such services that would be then commercial accommodation so commercial accommodation also has its own restrictions in you having to be a registered vet vendor indeed if you're making a service income of more than a million rands as somebody supplying commercial accommodation exclusive of the vet value amounts you have to be compulsory registered within the vet act of south africa or you can also exercise to register at your own free will like a voluntary registration if you have an excess of 120,000 rands worth of 10 over in a 12 month cycle or in a year if you so wish so the commercial accommodation voluntary uh, registration is basically uh, increased 220,000 rand whereas the other one is 50,000 rand. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So the last portion over here is that you will need to have what we call taxable supplies or taxable supplies, that being your goods or services, they would all have to be under the category of them being taxable. So you get to understand if you do not remember already from your undergrad knowledge that you know, taxable supplies can either be things that are obviously not exempt, not, not denied supplies, or not zero rated supplies. So you're expected to have this knowledge from your undergrad. So obviously by default, things which are not mentioned in the legislatures being within those categories that I've just mentioned now, they would in most cases be taxable supplies. But we'll get into more detail as we go into through the lesson about such su such uh, such supplies being a part of like you know the, the whole vet act so indeed now now that we basically dissected this definition of supplies and all of that 
we then need to keep in mind that for all of this to be true, you would need what we call an enterprise. So what is an enterprise? An enterprise is basically an activity or an enterprise which is uh, carried on regularly or continuously in South Africa by any person in the course of veterans of which goods or services, right, or goods or services are supplied for consideration whether for profit or not. It's quite a bit in that is entailed within the definition. So now for you to basically be in harmony with this, you need to have what we call an enterprise. So there are a few uh, there are a few key words that jump at us within this actual definition of an enterprise that we need to be very mindful of so far as us having to be on the right side of having to likely be VAT vendors and likely be you know charging VAT to particular transactions. So now uh, if you have a business for instance which would likely make that business an enterprise or an activity. And that business is operated on continuously. It's open from Monday to Friday, you know, and it's located within South Africa by any person, a person that is basically a company, a trust, a corporate, uh, close corporation, Whatever the case, as long as that business qualifies as being a, a recognized business as per the South African Companies Act. In the cause of federance of which goods or services. So this business is in the supply of goods or services, points that we touched on in our prior definition. And are supplied for a consideration. Consideration would basically equate to anything that equates to a value of money or money is actually the actual consideration. So what are we saying? So if somebody is basically making a supply of oranges and they're basically making the supply of oranges to third parties that would likely be buying the oranges for them for cash, the consideration in that situation would be the cash value of what they received in exchange for them to have been to supply the oranges to the third party. So the actual cash value that they would have received, that would deem that, per, uh, that value of the, of the actual exchange to be consideration. If it's supplying oranges and even return, it does not get money, money back, but he gets uh, a packet of pens, for instance. That packet of pens will now be the value of the packet of pens in monetary, monetary value will now be determined as the consideration which is getting. That would make that value market value. So that's basically what we mean in terms of consideration. However, if you giving somebody a supply of oranges and in return you don't get anything, in that situation there is no consideration. Therefore, if there is no consideration, that makes that transaction not an enterprise, uh, that makes uh, that transaction not deemable for it to be charging VAT because why? Because consideration is not being satisfied within that transaction. It's not in, you know, there is no consideration, which means this enterprise definition is not in harmony with our definition. Therefore, it's not a vetable transaction. These are the situations that you be you, you like to be thinking about. And the last part is whether you are making a profit or not. So even if I'm selling oranges and I've now managed to get consideration for my oranges, so my oranges cost me two rands and I sell my orange for one rand, you know, in that situation, I'm definitely making a loss. 
but it doesn't matter it still qualifies as a vertebral transaction because I've satisfied all the other portions within this particular scenario. So that's basically what we need to be mindful of, just to basically put you on a level-headed uh, situation in you, having to understand as to whether there would likely be vertebral uh, situations arising in certain transactions that we may be poised with. And that's basically where we are for now.